Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. Joe Biden threw a Hail Mary last night when he had his first solo news conference in quite some time. Was he convincing enough? Did Joe Biden get a passing grade? We'll break down for you today and would love to hear your assessment of it, too. Evidently, it wasn't enough for some top Democrats on the uh, House side of Congress. House Intelligence Committee, Jim Himes, as he called on President Biden to suspend his 2024 re-election campaign literally moments after the president finished his highly anticipated press conference. We have those details for you. When Joe Biden opened the news conference for questions, he very proudly held up a list and said that he had given reporters to call on. Was he supposed to say this? Was he actually supposed to show the world that his staff had given him a list of reporters to call on during this? Did he call on these predetermined reporters because they were safe and he knew what they would ask? He sure didn't call on Peter Ducey with Fox News. More on this in a moment, too. Democrats are reportedly furious over Biden's advisors shielding the president despite being aware of his physical decline, according to a new, new report out from CNN. They spoke with more than two dozen anonymous donors. Biden allies and current and former Democrat of officials about the president's mental ability, particularly after George Clooney called out his demeanor at last month's star-studded fundraiser in Los Angeles where millions was raised. And finally, there are reports that the last full cabinet meeting was back in October. The meetings are said to become increasingly stage-managed with list of talking points names of questioners, and drawings of where he should walk presented to him by aides. Officials are also told to submit their questions prior to the meetings. We have the full breakdown of yesterday's news conference and what this means, plus your feedback. Your comments are welcome via text, emails at joey at joeyhudson.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. But I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. All right, so I want you to have the final say today. Was Joe Biden convincing last night he probably did better than some thought but he still failed to convince many in his own party for example the top democrat on the house intelligence committee jim himes called on president biden to suspend his 2024 re-election campaign just moments after the president finished his highly anticipated big boy press conference biden participated in the press conference with reporters at the end of the nato summit in washington last night Biden, during the press conference, was asked questions from reporters who pressed him on whether he had stepped aside amid the mounting pressure from members within his own party following his disastrous debate performance just last month. Biden said that he is determined to stay in the race and maintain that he's fit to serve as president now and for the next four years. But Representative Jim Himes, from uh, he's the Democrat from Connecticut, sounded the alarm moments after the press conference concluded posting on x joe biden's record of public service is unrivaled his accomplishments are immense his legacy as a great president is secure he must not risk that legacy those accomplishments and american democracy to soldier on in the face of the horrors promised by donald trump he posted on x in a statement himes continued that as it's been the honor of his career to work with biden he said based on the achievements that secured his remarkable legacy in American history. He said, it's because of those traits and in consideration of that legacy that I hope President Biden will step away from the presidential campaign. Himes, at the time, was the 15th Democrat in the House to call on the president to step aside. Biden, though, currently does have the support of House Democrat leader Hakeem Jeffries and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Let's start at the beginning yesterday. Biden made one of the biggest gaffes of the day prior to the so-called big boy 
news conference, as he was introducing Ukrainian President Zelensky, Biden mistakenly refer, referred to the Ukrainian president as R- Russian President Vladimir Putin during the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. Here's the exchange. I've said before, Russia will not prevail in this war. Ukraine will prevail in this war and will stand with them every single step of the way. That's what the compact says, loudly and clearly. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway, Mr. President. I'm better. You are a hell of a lot better. <laughs> Thank you so much. As you heard, President Zelensky handled it pretty well, as he said, I'm, I'm the best, I'm the winner. Uh, Biden seemed to realize his mistake, corrected himself, saying he's going to beat President Putin. But clearly, today was the worst possible day to have made that mistake after all eyes was on Joe Biden, really just waiting on him to make another gaffe like that. The flub came ahead, of course, of Biden's high-stakes press conference where he was heavily scrutinized as the president fends off a growing number of calls from within his own party to, to drop out of the presidential race. So was this a serious enough mistake for Biden to step down? House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall a Republican from Texas, says Democrat Party leaders need to stand up and make President Biden step aside. McCall responded to the gaffe in a statement to Fox News saying, this is the person who has first strike capabilities with our nuclear arsenal. We're continuing to send a powerfully dangerous signal to our adversaries that the commander in chief is not in control of his faculties. The emperor has no clothes. And if he won't step aside, other senior leaders in the Democrat Party need to stand up and make him for the security of our nation, the congressman said. Also, other Democrats uh, lining up. U.S. Representative Eric Sorensen of Illinois became the 17th Democrat lawmaker to publicly call on President Biden to drop out of the race. Also posting on X, Sorensen praised Biden for having dedicated the, quote, bulk of his life in public service. He noticed that Biden ran for president in 2020 with the purpose of putting country over party. He said, today, I'm asking him to do that again. Sorensen stressed the importance of having a candidate who will communicate a positive vision for every person in the country and had the strength and wisdom needed to lead us through the worst storms, he said. Uh, He went on to say, every day I remain committed to the people of central and northwestern Illinois. I believe our best days are still ahead. And today, I'm hopeful President Biden will step aside in his campaign for president. Just prior to Representative Sorensen making that announcement, uh, Scott Peters, the uh, Democrat representative from California, became, at the time, the 16th Democrat. There's now 18 total uh, to call on the president to step down. Representative Peters said, today I asked President Biden to withdraw from the presidential campaign. The stakes are high and we are on a losing course. My conscience requires me to speak up and put loyalty to the country and to democracy ahead of my great affection for and loyalty to the president and those around him, he said. Uh, In a statement, he said, we must find a candidate from our deep bench of talent who can defeat Donald Trump. That means fielding a ticket that can win in the swing states where Democrats are not dominant, but where this election will be decided. He said the candidate must be selected through a fair and transparent process. And then when we leave our convention next month in Chicago, we must rally together and fight like hell, he said. I hope all Democrats will join me in putting the country first, preserving the progress of the past four years, and solidifying Joe Biden's legacy as one of the great leaders of our time by defeating Donald Trump. Again, there are now 18 Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives who have officially called on Biden to step aside Was last night's press conference performance enough? Did Biden do well enough to stop the bleeding? And when these Democrat leaders say they're doing this or they're calling on Biden to step aside to protect his legacy, is it about his legacy? Joe Biden says he's not in it to protect his legacy. I'm not in this for my legacy. I'm in this to complete the job I started. As you recall, understandably, many of you and many economists thought 
My initial initi initiatives that I put forward can't do that. It's going to cause inflation. Things are going to skyrocket. The debt's going to go up. What are you hearing now from mainstream economists? 16 economic Nobel laureates said I've done a hell of a job. And under my plans so far and what's going to happen in the future if I if I'm reelected, the things are going to get much better. Our economy is growing. I was determined when I got elected to stop the trickle down economic theory that if the wealthy did very well, everybody else would do well. My dad was a well read, decent guy. I don't remember much trickling down on his kitchen table. Middle class people and working class people need help. Okay, you kind of get the idea there. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutritious. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids, be able to to hike and, and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18-round uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded. Because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to, be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Portions of today's show brought to you by MyPillow. You've asked and MyPillow Listen. They're finally bringing you the most requested offer ever. Get the queen size premium MyPillow now for only $19.98 when you use promo code JOEY. MyPillow is made with a patented adjustable fill. It adjusts to your exact individual needs regardless of your sleep position. Helps keep your neck aligned and holds its shape all night long so you get the best sleep of your life. But that's not all. You get the six-piece kitchen or bath towel sets for only $25, too, when you use promo code JOEY. The brand-new mattress topper is low as $69.98. Get their famous MyPillow bed sheets for as low as $25 and so much more. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-893-4058. Use promo code JOEY and get huge discounts on all the MyPillow products, including the premium queen-size MyPillow for just $19.98. That's the lowest price ever. Don't delay. Place your order at MyPillow.com. Use promo code JOEY. Joey, boy, I'm getting a lot of text messages today, and I always love your text messages. Chris says, there's no way Biden could play 18 holes of golf. He can't find his way off the stage. How's he going to find his way from one hole to the next? I think you nailed it Tuesday. Go play (laughs) putt-putt. I did say that, didn't I, Chris? Uh, Texter says, Jill Biden should be ashamed of herself, encouraging Joe to run for another term. What an embarrassment for our nation. You're true for uh, saying that as well. Some of you commenting on my comments about uh, AI the other day. Uh, Texter says, Joey is a sci-fi fantasy writer. I disagree about chat GPT. Not quite sure. I can't remember what I said about chat GPT. Oh, well, I think I said it's pretty amazing what it will write by just putting in a few words. Uh, I'd love for you to follow up and tell me what your experience has been. Texter, cell phone use in, uh, in kids is out of control. I had to tell my 10-year-old grandson to put the phone down while he went to the bathroom, he tries to do everything one-handed. <laughs> look, uh, uh, it's crazy what you see. You look around any room now, and people's got their cell phones in their hands. Uh, Texer, how about Carrie Lake as a vice presidential choice? Um, I think she's been thought of. I don't think she has a chance. Texer says uh, Trump is the only one that can get the USA back on track. Biden is destroying it. I'm in Northeast Georgia. Appreciate you listening in Northeast Georgia. Texter, true conservatives believe in states' rights. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's in reference to the comments about the GOP platform 
and it positioning from the standpoint of, of abortion that that is a state's decision of, of how they should handle their abortion policy. Texture says maybe the two of them can have a duel instead of a golf match, and maybe Alec Baldwin can officiate. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> Another texture says, how about a Stairmaster competition? Uh, now, that'd be interesting to see. Jo- Joe Biden can't even uh, go up a set of stairs. Texture says, um, uh, g- this is Ray. Says, good day, Joey. It's time to get out the tinfoil hats. The real rulers of this country, the nameless, powerful people who control our intelligence apparatus, are enjoying the chaos in the Democrat Party. They don't care who controls the government. They control the country. They've always done so with threats and blackmail. This is why so many people elected with good intentions to make a difference soon become part of the swamp. I would agree with you there, uh, Ray. Ray says to change the system will take a clandestine war against these rulers and never forget they follow no rules and we must be willing to pledge our lives, liberty, and sacred honor to the battle just as our founding fathers did. It won't be easy, but nothing worth doing ever is. Other than that, all is well. Well, thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. Our text of encouragement from uh, Joel today, with a new day comes new strength and new thoughts. God bless. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Your comments are always welcome as well as your emails, joey at joeyhudson.com. And you can always leave me a message on the MyPillow message line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5623. So let's go to the MyPillow message line. Jennifer, what do you think? Unpack it for me. How do you think Joe Biden did in the news conference last night? Well, I think we all have to admit that he did better than we thought he would. And uh, when you give it, I don't know why he did better. I don't know if, uh, I guess we always suspect cocktails, drugs, you know, pumping up. But I think one thing might be is that he seems pretty proud of himself from the NATO uh, conference that just occurred. He seems, uh, you know, I think probably that seemed to have been a lift for him. And uh, so I think he came... Perhaps, just maybe, uh, he came from that kind of scene, that kind of scene, that kind of experience. Unlike that drilling, he they said that he took at Camp David before the debate. Yeah. Uh, you know, if they crammed his head full of stuff before the debate, then it, that you know, I thought all the time, I, I'm not sure that's going to work. But he just came out. I saw. And I think everybody had to see. I mean, you know, you you can't. It is what it is. Yeah. And and so why did why did he do better tonight? I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows. Except I think he was more for one reason. One thing he was felt better. He felt yeah. better. He looked better. He acted better. And and I think he had a confidence yeah. that for whatever reason. Yeah. So. So he didn't have it to debate. He he did have a few gaffes today. Of course, he introduced President Zelensky as President Putin uh, prior to the news conference. So that was a bad one. He confused his uh, vice president. He called Vice President Kamala Harris uh, Vice President Trump. But overall, I think probably you give him and have to give him an an A minus just for standing there for almost an hour and taking questions. Yes. Uh, the way he did. And, uh, you know, I guess we're used to Biden gaffes by now. I mean, he corrected on both of those things. And uh, so I guess that wasn't really, uh, I think what we all saw was we expected worse and we got better. Yes. He, he really, uh, yeah, he, he really, all he had to do was answer the questions relatively cohesively. And, you know, he exceeded all the expectations because everybody thought he was just going to really be a flop and he wasn't. Now, were you a little suspicious though? The fact that, that he had the, the, the uh, reporters, a list of whom he was to call out. Some people are already speculating. Well, if he had the list of, of the reporters, did he also know what they were going to ask him? Well, you know, I, I, I think typically he has had, a. I mean, I've noticed before all along, he doesn't do much of this, but when he has, he's had names before, uh, you know, people ready that he was going to call on. And yeah, I kind of had the feeling that, that the questions were, that he kind of knew that what the subjects was, were going to be. I don't know exactly how all of that works, yeah. but I do. But we we heard about the uh, you know the radio 
reporter that yep. received the questions and signed off on that. And who, who, we remember yep. Donna Brazil gave questions to Hillary, didn't she, during it's, the debate? She did. Look, Jennifer, we know that the Democrats are going to cheat anytime they get the chance. Thanks for your call on the MyPillow message line, 864-477-JOEY. Yours is welcome. Always use promo code JOEY when you go to MyPillow.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen when it's time to get those new appliances. When you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted appliance warehouse. They're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. So back to yesterday's highlights of Joe Biden's press conference. Some called it a disaster. Others didn't think seem to think that he did that badly. And I guess I probably fall into that category because, you know, the bar was set so low anyway. Because people were expecting Joe to, to really just mess this up pretty badly. And I think what we're going to hear for the next few days anyway is the fact that he stood there for close to an hour. He asked a lot of questions. Now, again, it concerns me a bit when he opens the news conference by saying, well, I've been given this list of people here uh, to call on. So if he was given a list of the ones he was supposed to call on, does that mean that they knew that these were friendlies, that these were people who would not go after Joe Biden? And did they potentially know what they might ask? One of the questions asked was whether the president has the ability to continue his job. He was asked by Felicia Schwartz with the Financial Times based on his staff announcing that maybe he needs to start his day a little later and end it a little sooner. Talked about not having any events after 8 o'clock. She asked if he's capable of doing the job. Biden says the key is to pace himself better, and he seemed to place the blame on his staff, adding that they tend to add things to his schedule and that the First Lady is not happy with that. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you, Mr. President. Presidency is the most straining job in the world, and it's 24-7. How can you say you'll be up for that next year, in two years, in four years, given the limits you've acknowledged that you have today? The limits I've acknowledged I have? There's been reporting that you've acknowledged that you need to go to bed earlier and your evening around 8. That's not true. Look, (laughs) what I said was, instead of my every day starting at 7 and going to bed at midnight, it'd be smarter for me to pace myself a little more. And I said, for example, the eight, seven, six stuff, instead of starting a fundraiser at nine o'clock, start at eight o'clock. People get to go home by 10 o'clock. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, and if you look at my schedule since, I've, since I made that stupid mistake of, in the campaign, in the, in the debate, I mean, my schedule has been full bore. I've done, where's, when, where's Trump been? Riding around in his golf cart, filling out his scorecard before he hits the ball? I mean, look, uh, he's done virtually nothing. And I have, I don't know how many, don't hold me to, it, roughly 20 major events. Someone with thousands of people showing up. And so I just think it's better. I always have an, an, an inclination, whether I was playing sports or doing politics, just to keep going, not stop. I just got to just pace myself a little more, pace myself. And the next debate, I'm not going to be traveling in the 15 time zones a week before. (laughs) Anyway, that's what it was about. That's what it was about. And by the way, even with that, I love my staff. 
but they add things. They add things all the time. At the very end. I'm catching hell from my wife for that. Anyway. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Zeke Miller, Associated Press. So I left that last little piece in there just so you could see how from question to question, if you didn't get to see the entire news conference, I was glued to it. I had to see this. He seemed to get a little disoriented and a little confused in between questions. He had always very slowly looked down at his list as if he had lost his place on the list. And at one point, I think he actually did because he wasn't quite sure who to call on. And he knew everybody was looking at him in the room. And you could tell that he was stalling, trying to find his place on his list. His ability to win and more importantly, serve a full term were top of mind in yesterday's news conference. Biden was asked if he thinks Vice President Kamala Harris is qualified to serve if he's not able to complete his term or if he were to step aside now and allow her to finish the campaign. Biden was very defiant and continued to cite his common Democrat talking points about how he thinks he's been successful and deserves another term. Mr. President, your political future has hung over the NATO summit a little bit this week. Speaker Pelosi made a point of suggesting that your decision on whether to stay in the race was still open. George Clooney and a handful handful of lawmakers have called on you to step aside. Reuters is reporting tonight that UAW leadership is concerned about your ability to win. UAW just endorsed me, but go ahead. Thank you. Um, My question for you is, how are you incorporating these developments into your decision to stay? And separately, what concerns do you have about Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket? Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Number one, the fact is that <clears throat> the consideration is that I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once and I will beat him again. Secondly, the idea, I served in the Senate a long time. The idea that senators and congressmen running for office worry about the ticket is not unusual. And I might add, there are at least five presidents running or incumbent presidents who had lower numbers than I have now later in the campaign. So there's a long way to go in this campaign. And so I, uh, I'm just going to keep moving, keep moving. And because, look, I got more work to do. We've got more work to finish. There's so much. We made so much progress. Think about it. Think about where we are economically relative to the rest of the world. Name me a world leader who wouldn't want to trade places with our economy. We've created over 800,000 manufacturing jobs, 1.5 million to, I mean, so things are moving. We got more to go. Working class people still have need help. Corporate greed is still at large. Their prices, the corporate profits have doubled since the pandemic. They're coming down. And so I'm optimistic about where things are going. He's the only one optimistic about where things are going. Former President Trump noted President Biden's flubbed during a Thursday press conference in which he called his predecessor a former vice president. Uh, He wrote on Truth Social, Crooked Joe begins his big boy press conference with Calp's uh, uh, exclamation point. A conference with, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, though I think she was not qualified to be president. Great job, Joe, he wrote. Uh, President Biden also brushed off concerns about him dropping out of the presidential race, saying that there were no signs of him slowing down. The comments came in response to a reporter who had been asked, uh, who had asked Biden how he could assure the American people that he wouldn't have more quote bad nights as the president himself characterized his debate performance. Biden said the best way to assure them is the way that he assures himself. How can you reassure the American people uh, that you are up to the task and that there won't be more bad nights at a debate stage or somewhere else? First thing about Zelensky asking for the ability to strike deep into Russia. We have allowed Zelensky to use American weapons in the near term, in the near abroad, into Russia. Whether or not 
he has, we should be, he should be attacked. For example, should Zelensky, he's not, if he had the capacity to strike Moscow, strike the Kremlin, would that make sense? It wouldn't. The question is, what's the best use of the weaponry he has, and the weaponry we were getting to him? I've gotten a more high, more, I got a more long range capacity as well as defensive capacity. And so our military is where I'm following the advice of my commander in chief, my, 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 of the chief of staff of the military, as well as the secretary of defense and our intelligence people. And we're making a day to day basis on what they should and shouldn't go, how far they should go in. That's a logical thing to do. Second question related to Bad nights, sir. How can you reassure the American people that you won't have uh, more bad nights, whether they be on a debate stage or on some matter of foreign policy? Well, I tell you what, um, the best way to assure them is the way I assure myself. And that is, am I getting the job done? Am I getting the job done? Can you name me somebody who's gotten more major piece of legislation passed in three and a half years? I got created 2,000 jobs this last week. So if I slow down, I can't get the job done. That's a sign that I shouldn't be doing it. But there's no indication of that yet. None. Wow. Are you reassured? He stood there and looked everybody in the eye, looked the American people in the eye and said, he doesn't see any problems. There doesn't seem to be any concerns in what alternate universe does he live? Well, I'll tell you, he lives in the Biden universe, the universe where his staff has protected him. We learned yesterday there hasn't been a, a full cabinet meeting since October. And even the recent cabinet meetings before that, they were all scripted. Cabinet members had to submit their questions ahead of time. Joe Biden was given copious notes of how to even walk into the room. And he wants us to believe that there's no concerns and no one has raised a concern. This is where Biden said that he was conferring with his commander in chief before he realized what he'd said. And he, uh, he meant to say chief of staff because he's the commander in chief, or at least he was the last time I checked. Unfortunately, your comments are welcome on the text line. Send me a quick email as well. Joey, Joey Hudson.com. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477. Joey, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the firm and forward text line. You can leave a quick voice message and your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can, you could trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman, they do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done and you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at firm and ford doesn't even have to be a ford they they service all makes and models visit my friends at firm and ford online at firm and firm and we wrap up another week uh, you have a big plans for the weekend i hope you do hope you have plans to spend some extra time with your family uh enjoy the weather be careful it's going to be a hot one as well but uh, you know one of the big questions and of course monday i'll be doing sunrise carolina from milwaukee the site of the republican national convention so uh the big question that we've had for weeks now who will it be who will donald trump's vice presidential pick be that's going to be solved sometime next week now trump is really the his showmanship is coming through again because he wants to push it to the very last minute and he wants to make it a very big deal, which it should be. But the way conventions are these days, you really need a little advance notice because the vice president is expected to give a speech on Wednesday night. So you got to give the person, he or she, the opportunity to prepare for that. But Trump loves the, the showmanship. He, he wants to lead, you know, he wants it to be the last minute. Now, we may have a, a hint as to who that could be. 
And of course, everybody is looking <laughs> for, for that hint because everybody wants to be the first to know. And look, I'd love to be the first to know. I'd love to be the one to break the news for you next week when I'm uh, at, at Fiserv uh, Stadium reporting on what's happening at the Republican National Convention. It's going to be a fun week. I love Republican National Conventions. They're one of the most fun times uh, in the four-year cycle for me. And I've been to every one since probably 2000, maybe. Maybe maybe before that. I need to think back on that. Uh, Years ago, we actually went to both the Republican and Democrat conventions. Uh, We stopped going to the Democrat convention after Boston. That was when John Kerry... Uh, got the nomination. That was when Barack Obama first came on the scene. First time I ever heard of Barack Obama was in Boston. I happened to be on the floor of the convention uh, that night when he brought the house down. I've told this story many times. I knew right then that Barack Obama was going to be somebody. I just didn't realize he was going to be somebody that quickly because it was only a few years later when he came on the national scene and got the Democrat nomination. But anyway, the, the national conventions are a lot of fun. They're long days. I'll be doing, of course, Sunrise Carolina. I'll be helping Mike Gallagher with the Mike Gallagher Show. Uh, so I hope you'll listen. You can listen online at MikeOnline.com. You can listen on the Odyssey app. You can listen uh, to, to my podcast. Again, just uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search for Joey Hutchins, Just the Truth, because I'll have full reports every day. Be interviewing a lot of people, too. I may even have some bonus material along the way that you can only get online. So... Uh, be sure and keep it, uh, k- keep me tuned in next week because we're going to have some important stuff. So, so back to the vice presidential pick, because everybody wants to know who it is. Uh, we may have gotten a glimpse a- and again, this may be planned. <laughs> this, this may be to throw us off because it still wouldn't surprise me if a hat, a, a name is pulled out of the hat, one that we haven't even talked about, but Donald Trump jr. Yesterday was scheduled to speak at the RNC on Wednesday, right before President Donald Trump will announce his choice for his running mate. This according to Axios. Now, Trump Jr. has pushed Ohio Senator J.D. Vance to be his father's vice presidential pick. That's not really a secret. Others in contention include, of course, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. Florida Senator Marco Rubio seemed to be the final list. Tim Scott's name still occasionally mentioned. And again, I'd I'd love to see Senator Scott in there. And and I do believe Senator Scott will play a major role in the Trump administration. So Trump is set to announce his selection sometime in the next few days. And, And I suspect it'll be, I'd say no sooner than Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday, the day of. Now, he may let the person know, he may let them have a little heads up. The problem is, once you tell the person that they've been chosen... It is hard to contain it. But I think we got a hint. When his eldest son, who's been an early advocate for J.D. Vance and who's, his, uh, who's a close friend of his, is scheduled to speak and will introduce the vice president, uh, the scheduling of Trump Jr. to speak on Wednesday, I believe, and a lot of others agree with me, that this is the latest sign that J.D. Vance may be in the lead. He may have the advantage here. An individual familiar told Axios that the speaking order was set weeks ago. On Wednesday, Trump Jr. shared a clip of Vance speaking at a national conservative event this past week, and he wrote, Stop what you're doing and watch this right now if you want to know what America First is all about. Hint, hint. (laughs) Wink, wink. Vance, of course, is the author of the Hillbilly Elegy. He started out as a Trump critic, but has since become a, a pretty loyal follower of, of, the, of the former president. Among Republicans, he's seen as a good surrogate for Trump's America First movement uh, and isolationist policies. He's also seen as someone who can connect with working class people, and we need that. We need the working class, middle class people to be able to identify with this ticket. So if Trump chooses Vance, he'll probably be focusing on three key states, Pennsylvania, of course, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Among Burgum and Rubio, 
Vance is the closest to Trump ideologically, and the former president reportedly enjoys his company. Now, there's been this thing going around for the past few days uh, that Trump doesn't like Vance because of his beard. Uh, Trump kind of uh, laughed that one off uh, yesterday, actually, and uh, said that that, that really uh, that, that wasn't a factor. Um, Vance has pushed some Silicon Valley figures to support Trump. He scheduled a fundraising dinner with David Sachs, a, a tech entrepreneur. Uh, Wednesday, Trump's eventual choice for VP uh, will also host a fundraising event in Milwaukee where the RNC is taking place. The event is called Strength in Unity. And again, this is all being planned with the anticipation of knowing who that person is. The following day, Trump and his nominee for vice president are hosting another fundraiser called the Freedom First event ahead of the of his acceptance of the Republican presidential nomination on Thursday evening. And again, I'll be there telling you all about it. Next, you don't want to miss a single day next week. Not a single day. You miss a single day, you're going to miss a lot. Trump advisor Brian Hughes previously said in a statement to The Independent that as President Trump has him said himself, the top criteria in selecting a vice president is a strong leader who will make a great president for eight years after his next four-year term concludes. He added, but anyone telling you they know who or when President Trump will choose his VP is lying unless that person is named Donald J. Trump. But I got, I got to say, I got to think that his son, Don Jr., and, and his family, I'm sure Eric and Laura, have a pretty good idea of what he's thinking right now. And before I probably would have, I might have given the advantage to Doug Burgum, potentially. I, I don't think Marco Rubio is in the hunt because I think the complication of the two being from Florida just really rules Marco Rubio out. Maybe not. I mean, Trump said the other day there's ways around that. But I think, and do you agree, that Don Jr., if he's scheduled to speak and he's going to introduce the vice president, wouldn't it be nice if it's his friend, J.D. Vance? That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way and encouraging them to listen to just the truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your email's always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special, $25 for the My Towels six-piece towel set. When you use promo code Joey, just go to mypillow.com. Always use promo code Joey. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Remember, God's got this. He's still in control.